Hi, it's Reverend John. And our thought for today, I release any belief in limitation. When was the last time that you felt critiqued? You know, maybe somebody didn't agree with you. Maybe they didn't like the presentation. There was an error in the slides or in the, in the report. And they were giving you feedback. How did it make you feel? Did you feel empowered or did you feel diminished and limited? How about this scenario? Uh, have, you ever, have you ever felt slighted or insulted? Have you ever been the subject of rumors and gossip? Triangulation that didn't line up with the facts as you understood them. How did that make you feel? Now, both of those scenarios may have different intentions, right? The first scenario, somebody may just want to give you uh, constructive criticism. They might be trying to help. In, in the second scenario, very often it feels like somebody is out to get you. Somebody's angry with you. Somebody is trying to put you down. Now, in either scenario, we have the ability within us to be empowered or to feel diminished and limited. There's a story in the Gospel of Luke that talks about Jesus when early in his ministry, when he returned to his hometown of Nazareth and spoke at a synagogue. At the end of his talk, he was run out with the intention of hurling him off the cliff. Those who recognized him from his childhood were filled with rage with his words and forget about even considering being the prophet they had nothing for him. Now, this experience early in his career really could have uh, set Jesus on a different path. He could have felt diminished by it. He could have felt like, you know, I'm not the one. Boy, I'm not very good at this. Nobody liked me. Here I was at my hometown thinking everyone would be supportive. Wherever we go, there are going to be people that disagree with us. With that critique us. And if Jesus had succumbed to that critique, then he would not have fulfilled his divine purpose, attaining that consciousness of Christ and teaching that in his own special, unique way to the world. Whenever something comes up in your life, and you start to feel that diminishment. Maybe you start to feel anger and rage at the rumors. Maybe you start to feel a, a state of apathy and you drop down into an energy of blame and humiliation and shame. It's times like that when it's critical for us to release the belief in limitation. Whatever happened in the past, however that transpired, it's not the truth and whole of who you are. For you are that divine individual, that spark of divinity. That's your true identity. And how you bring that out into the world, that's your purpose. So the first step in releasing that belief and limitation that comes into play is to trust. Not trust in other people, because people are going to be people. But trust in the indwelling spirit of God. Trust in that uh, ever-present substance and intelligence and wisdom and love. Trust that that is never, far, never farther away than your breath. That it is always there, always present, always active. And as you begin to trust in that innate goodness within you, you begin to trust yourself. You start, stop doubting yourself, stop shaming yourself, and you start to shift your consciousness out of the rage, blame, shame, and guilt spiral up into a consciousness of optimism. Once you get up there, the second step is having a willingness to begin a forgiveness practice. Now, forgiveness, as I've mentioned many times, is an internal process. Forgiveness is the process of taking back the power, not having that limited belief have power over you. 
It has nothing to do with the people out there, except you will eventually express forgiveness for them. You might have some understanding for the person that's trying to bring you down. Well, maybe they were wounded as a child. Maybe they feel really bad about themselves and that's the only way that they can feel good. However, that may come about. The first step is having that inner sense of forgiveness. Having a sense of knowing that truth of who you are. And as you begin that process of forgiveness, you continue to raise your consciousness. And as you raise your consciousness, you raise the consciousness of the planet. This is inspired by Paul's second letter to the, to the second Chronicles, rather, uh, chapter 15, verse 7. But you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Do not allow those beliefs in that one moment to diminish you. Stay strong in your faith, your power of faith, knowing and trusting that divine spirit is within you, active right now, giving you the right next step, comforting you. It's like a warm blanket. You might experience it as that loving presence. You know, the, the older, wiser you, hugging you and, and telling you it's going to be okay. Trust in God. Trust in yourself. And have a willingness to begin a forgiveness practice. Throughout this day, remember the thought, I release any belief in limitation. Love and blessings and have a wonderful day.